Welcome back to Flint Creek Transport. My name is Justin. I figured instead of sitting in my office, it's a beautiful day out here. Check it out. And I got this truck behind me. It's not working today. It kind of excuses the pipes or the buckets up there. We just had to keep the rain, the rain out of there. But instead of sitting in my office, I figured, well, you know what? I use the Kenworth W900 as a backdrop. So that's what it is today. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about trucking, just some tips for drivers. So here goes. <laughs> I know there's many of you guys that have been experienced that are in the trucking industry a long time and actually have a lot more experience than I do. I've started uh, as soon as I turned 18, I got my class B. As soon as I turned 21, I got my CDL class A. And you know, even before that I was driving farm trucks. So I have quite a few years of experience, but there's many other guys that have a lot more experience than me. But there's some things that I've learned in the industry while I was here uh, that I think are a help to me uh, when I've learned some of these things by experience I've learned there's certain things you want to do to make trucking a little bit easier for you so we get new drivers coming in and so this message or this video is for especially you new drivers coming in uh, maybe for inexperienced guys and as a general rule even any driver you know you think about you you listen to some of these things and I think you want to apply them they're definitely important things and definitely things that helped me in driving so i don't have a specific order or a specific like number one number two number three like order of importance but guys these tips for new drivers are there's one just as important as the next so let me know what you think in the comments uh these are just things that helped me when i started trucking and you know thinking back to the years of experience that i've had this has definitely helped me so number one is go slow too many guys start out and they want to get the job done super fast and they go too fast big trucks go slow much easier to shift one of the things i always tell our drivers coming in uh, back when i did some of the hiring for the drivers i tell them is go slow there's no need to take uh take off fast at the intersection there's no need to just you know get right on it the first day take your time take your time the first couple days take it easy you know get things figured out and even long term you know there's a time and place to go you know get get the job done but in a big truck when you got a lot of horsepower all that torque and you start going fast trying to to beat the time or beat the clock or whatever it is it doesn't work uh, you're going to rip something apart you know people that are not familiar with the trucking industry they don't like to see big trucks going fast we have a store out front and the last thing that our customers want to see is a big truck going 20 mile an hour out the driveway. An important one, guys, is go slow. Take it easy. It's gonna be much easier on the equipment. It's gonna be much easier uh, to shift the truck and everything else, so go slow. This next one is a real big pet peeve of mine. When I see guys shift at high RPMs, drives me up the wall. I Honestly, I don't like it. And I shift at low RPMs uh, a lot of times there's guys I've rode with that shift at high RPMs and I just, I zip it. I don't say anything, but for me, especially when you're new starting out, shift at low RPMs, much easier to shift, much easier to shift. Trust me guys, any Caterpillar engine, I, I'm not as familiar with Cummins. Uh, the newer Cummins, yes I am, shift at low RPMs, uh, Detroit's, eh. You know, I, I didn't spend much time in a, in a Detroit, but mostly it's been uh, Caterpillar engines that I've been driving anywhere from, you know, 97, 98 motors up to 07. And those motors, prime shifting 1,000 RPMs, you run it up to maybe 1,500, 1,600, and you shift. It does vary if you're, if you're pulling a hill or whatever, but when you're just taking off at a light, you shift at low RPMs, it's gonna shift much easier for you. Once you get experienced in, I don't know, you're running high horsepower and things like that, you can't shift at low RPMs. But when you're running a stock truck, you can shift at low RPMs. And really that's the torque range and things where these engines are supposed to be at, uh, in that 1,000 to 1,500, 1,600 RPMs. 
pulling a long hail, you know, that's when you're in that 1200 RPMs. But that shifting thing is a whole, that's for a whole nother day. But usually I take it up to about 15, 1600 RPMs, shift, drops it back, and, and then go again. Again, 15, 1600 RPMs, and then shift. This next one, guys, I'll let you look at the truck instead of looking at me. This next one is to do some with pre-trip on trucks. If you're not sure, double check. Again, if you're not sure, double check. So if there's something behind you when you're backing up, or if you think that there's something, that there might be something stuck in between your duels, or you for, you're not sure if your fifth wheel is latched or not, or you know whether your taillights are working, or whatever it is, go back and double check. It doesn't hurt to double check. Definitely make sure before you take off. When you're backing around a, a with a trailer double check if you're not sure on something hop out double check it only takes a minute the last thing you want to do is run somebody over the last thing you want to do is you know rip mud flaps off or you know have a stone fly out of a duel and kill somebody you know if you're not sure on something just hop out and double check it's going to give you peace of mind when you do that so that's an important one guys is double check when you're running around with a bumper like this you want to make sure that you got clearance. You want to make sure you got enough air in the suspension. There's, there's many things that you got to make sure. This next one can get me sometimes is have a plan B. And this is primarily when you're driving down the road and you see a car that decides to turn left in front of you and you have to decide, are you going to slow down or are you going to take the shoulder? I always kind of think this worst case scenario, right? you got to have a plan b you got to be able to have room know that you have a plan b so plan a is if you're going plan a is going to be you know what you got time to get stopped get stopped plan b is go around the car or if you decide hey you know what there's a wide, super wide shoulder i can easily get around this car turning left sometimes what happens the shoulder is wider than it appears to be and the car that should have turned left did not turn left and they're maybe who knows reading a map or just taking their good old time like they do sometimes turning left in front of you and you're coming up behind them and you're like oh and the shoulder is getting that turning out to be pretty small then what you know then what and that's where it's always good to have a plan b so when you're going into these situations don't get backed into a corner so if you're if you're not sure slow down uh, back to my first point is go slow. If you're seeing something, give yourself enough time, give yourself enough distance. And if you see something, hey, this car is going to turn left up here, start slowing down. The worst case scenario, plan B can always be, is to stop. If you got so much speed that you can't get stopped and you got to go flying around the car on the right, happened to me. I've done it. I make mistakes. Shame on me. You know, uh, the that's the last thing you want to do. But most times, if you're ready for it, it's not a big deal. But when you're not ready, those last minute things, you could be looking around, all of a sudden there's a car turn the left. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? What's your plan B? Sometimes you gotta go to plan C too, and it's tough. But try to have a plan B. So if you're not gonna stop, you're gonna decide, oh, you know what, I'm gonna go around the car, and if that don't work, what are you gonna do then? Do you still have enough time to get stopped? That was one of my very first, first accidents uh, in trucking, was coming through Oswego, New York, coming through up to red light, didn't get stopped in time. Car in front of me decided to hit the brakes real fast and it could have went through, but instead slammed on the brakes and I bumped it. So one of the first accidents, and it actually, I think it knocked us off that the insurance company actually kicked us out because I wasn't quite on the policy yet. I was still young and they didn't like that. So we had to get a new policy from someone else. It was a real pain, uh, <laughs> but you live and learn, right? This next one kind of goes with uh, the previous one is think about what you would do in case of an emergency. If your truck started burning, do you know where your fire extinguisher is? You know, there's a lot of guys that don't. <laughs> and, and it's bad here because our guys do get to run different trucks, especially when you hop into a different truck. Not every truck's a little bit different. Some, some of the fire extinguishers are between the seats. Some of them are in the sleeper. You know, and I always want to make sure if there is an emergency, you know where your stuff is. You know, making sure you know in an emergency where your safety equipment is, where your tools are, uh, whatever it is. You know, know what you have. 
in an emergency. If you have an accident, what's your first thing you're gonna do? You know, can you stay calm? Can you stay focused? What happens if a car turns out in front of you? What's the first thing you're gonna do? You know, you gotta think about these things. It's gonna happen. I, I hate to say that it's gonna happen, but when you're putting on 100 plus thousand miles a year, it's very, very hard to not have an accident. And these cars are going to pull out in front of you. That's not the, that's not the question. They're gonna pull out in front of you. It's, are you gonna get stopped in time? And if you do have an accident, what are you gonna do? Just knowing ahead of time, if you had an accident, what's your accident plan? You know, are you gonna get down their information, get the insurance card, you know, take pictures? There's, there's so many things that when you're involved in an accident, you don't really think about doing. And until the accident's over and done with and you're out there, you're like, you know what, I should have done this and I should have done that. Think about it ahead of time. Plan, prepare. This next one is actually, I think, in the uh, FMCSA booklet that they give you to study for your CDL. Scan your gauges, know what you got, know what you're working with. And that is something that even I forget sometimes, but check your gauges. Periodically check your gauges. Know what you're working with. Listen for those odd sounds. Watch those gauges. If there's something wrong, you know, you should be able to, you know, periodically check everything. Check your mirrors. You know, I've seen, I was just traveling the other day on the thruway. There's a cop car passing me. I've no, I noticed it right away in my mirror. I was just driving my uh, personal vehicle. I noticed it right away in my mirror. Well, the truck in front of me, he was a big 18 wheeler. He didn't, he didn't know that there was a cop coming up and it sat on his tail for quite a while till all of a sudden he looked in his mirrors realized oh there's a cop back there and quick whipped it over so you got to you got to be checking your mirrors and when you look in your mirrors don't just look right behind you look on back when you get done at the end of the day as well do a post trip check over that truck make sure you do your pre-trip in the morning there's so many things that can go wrong on a big rig and so many things that can happen you put on a lot of miles in a day check over everything that's important for post trip and pre trip it's much easier for a shop to plan on ahead of time when you can call them and say hey i got a light out or i got an airbag that's leaking or whatever it is then to pull in at five o'clock after everything's closed and say hey i need you to change out a light i need you to fix an airbag or whatever and they don't have it in stock so now the parts stores are closed it just makes you know and it delays you for the next morning so check your stuff let the guys know let your mechanics know or maybe you're over the out on the road and you can stop at a petri you say hey you know what i got a light out i need you know i got a a tire that's neat that needs change that's developed that developed a leak you can say you know what i'm gonna stop at a petri you call ahead and make a make an appointment it's gonna be much easier probably even save you some money so know your equipment know what you got scan your gauges check over everything again and again and again get to know it like it's your own personal thing whether it's a company truck or not you got to know every creak every rattle that these trucks make part of life guys let me know in the comments if i missed anything hopefully these tips help you out thanks so much for watching we'll see you in the next one peace out